Extraordinary women. We're bold, we're beautiful, powerful, and inspired. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm so happy that you've dropped by to join me for Extraordinary Women TV, where we learn how to put our dreams into action. My guest is Victoria Dickinson. She's the director and CEO of McMichael Gallery located in the GTA. So glad to have you here, Victoria. Now, what's interesting uh, about you um, is that, well, you're a historian. Uh, you're running one of the most prestigious art institutions in Canada. But you've been doing this uh, work in the museums area, field of museums, for more than 35 years. That's true, and thank you very much for having me, Shannon. It's uh, yes, it's been my uh, career, but also my uh, vocation and my pleasure, really, since I was 18 years old. So I started working at the Royal Ontario Museum as a student in university. So I've continued on. So when you were a student, I mean, how did you decide that you wanted to work in 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 a museum? Well, I think it was part of, and I think a lot of people who work in the museums who come from Toronto have this experience. I was a member of the Saturday Morning Club at the Royal Ontario Museum. A well-known club. It was. I was 12 years old, and I remember going, my mother right. signing me up, and really, it, I fell in love with the museum. So tell us just a little bit about the McMichael. Well, the McMichael is actually one of the most extraordinary galleries in Canada. It's a great uh, institution. It's been, it was, it's almost 50 years old. We're celebrating our 50th anniversary in 2016. But we're on 100 acres. We have an extraordinary collection of Canadian artists and Aboriginal artists. So we only collect the works of artists who are working in Canada, contributing to Canadian art, or Aboriginal artists in Canada. Now, you have uh, a large collection of the Group of Seven. That's one of the things that you're certainly known for. That's the founding collection. Robert McMichael and Sidney mm. McMichael, who founded the gallery, they began with collecting the Group of Seven, and they went on to collect Aboriginal artists. So it's been a wonderful collection that started with that core collection, but has grown really to encompass um, Canadian artists working today, so contemporary Canadian artists as well as really moving into looking at Canadian, Canadian art in a global context. Now, I had the pleasure of um, recently being at the gallery, uh, attending your Moonlight Gala uh, event, which was lovely, with Holly Cole singing. Um, you have an annual event then, um, at, at least once a year, to fundraise. And, Absolutely, and fundraising yeah. is very important. We really rely on private support. We're a government agency, so we're funded by the government of Ontario, but like many public agencies, we're being encouraged to look for private support. What's really exciting for us is there's been so many people stepping forward to help the McMichael and to come and contribute through attending galas or making contributions. So let's talk about uh, women uh, in art. Uh, I know that you have pieces of Emily Carr, of course, uh, uh, who's absolutely. part of the Group of Seven, right. which is actually ten. Is that right? Well, the Group of Seven is ten. She actually was more of a friend of the Group of Seven. Right. But uh, yes, we have some great uh, pieces by Emily Carr, but we have other artists as well from the Beaver Hall Group, which was a well-known group of women artists in Montreal and also uh, women artists who've worked, um, more contemporary women artists. We've worked a lot with Aboriginal artists, so we have a lot of things by Daphne Ojig, for example, very well-known Woodland School artist, as well as by, um, we're working with and showing works by people like Meryl McMaster and um, Kathy Daly, uh, Barbara Pratt, and we have a great Barbara Pratt show, which we're uh, going to be welcoming to the gallery. So yes, we do a lot of works with women artists, and McMichael always has. They've always uh, the galleries always work with women artists. In um, in the time that you've been working in this field, I mean, have you noticed a change in how women are being depicted in art um, for a very long time? Um, you know, women often were sort of painted as an object of desire for right. a man's gaze, you know, historically. Um, now we know that's not always the case now, but ha have you seen women being depicted differently as, uh, as an object in art? Well, I think it's, you know, there's always been women artists. There have always been artists um, painting, women who've painted. But we see a lot more young women and women entering the art uh, world now. Well, look at someone like Mary Pratt. She also paints nudes, but I do think you're right. She sees them with a different eye. Sure. She's looking, 
she's looking at the woman's body as a woman and I think that is a very different perception so they, they become edgier they're more political I think in their uh, viewpoint of women's relationship to her body and to the rest of the world I think we're also seeing a lot of younger women coming to grips with their identity both as women um, we've uh, seen exhibitions of um, women looking in a sense coming to the other side of the mirror looking at themselves looking at themselves in the relationship to the world and making those questions of identity that men have been asking of course through art for a long time so becoming subject not object and becoming active subjects talking about the world so you as the director and CEO of the McMichael I mean in your role I mean, what what does your day-to-day -day job entail <laughs> Well, it seems to entail a lot of talking to people, but also, um, you know, it's an awful lot about communications. And mm -hmm. I think when you're managing any organization, it is about communication. So working with the staff, uh, listening to them, and helping them achieve their goals. And interestingly enough, all our senior management is, is female. We are all women. So, uh, but it is a real pleasure to work with a team and to, my job is to ensure that they can do the work that they uh, want to do and that they can work with their staff to achieve the goals of the institution. And at the same time, you're a historian. Right. So how do you find that? Well, let's talk about what, what, what do you do as a historian? Well, actually, I work in visual culture, so I've been looking at how, um, how how the world is represented by artists and by people who are more like illustrators so I'm particularly interested in landscape so how has the North American landscape been depicted over time and we see now that um, a lot of artists you know in, the, in very early it was mainly map makers and illustrators who were looking at landscape now we see artists who are actually forming the land itself so using the land itself using materials in the landscape to change the way we think about our relationship to the land. In particular, this is important as we think about the environment that surrounds us and all the changes we're having in the environment. And I know that um, you have some involvement with a new uh, museum, the uh, Museum for Human Rights, right. which yeah. is going to be located in Winnipeg. Right, yes. Right. I, I worked for the Museum for Human Rights for about 18 months. Uh, working on helping the uh, staff there and the board set up the structure of the museum itself. So. Museums have a certain structure, they have uh, ways in which they're organized, and so I worked with them to help set that structure up. Ext extremely exciting project. Now, Victoria, we're just going to take a quick break, and that means it's my good to know minute, and I know you've got a great success tip. <laughs> well, I think my success trip is to keep your energy levels high. I think you need a lot of energy, and I think the way to keep them high is to take care of yourself, to make sure you get the exercise, good food, the leisure, and the... Um, the simulation that you need and I think that that's really important particularly for women because we're expected of course to do all that much more and that's good to know and thanks for that well we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back more on extraordinary women TV so stay where you are Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner and I'm speaking with Victoria Dickinson. She is the director and CEO of the McMichael Gallery located in the GTA. Now Victoria, and I'm really enjoying this conversation with you. Now something that's really unique about the McMichael, well the gardens are lovely. Mm -hmm. I mean they're art themselves. They are indeed. <laughs> What's interesting is the McMichaels planted most of those trees. When they got the uh, grounds in 1950s, they were farmers fields. So they planted those white pines and those birches because they wanted to evoke the sense of the landscape painted by the group of seven. As a really a woman leader in the museum field, was it challenging for you to sort of garner respect in your role? I think it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm dating myself by saying, yes, I think there was a lot of change that happened in the 60s and 70s, right. and I benefited from that change, but also some, from some great mentors who were women. So I think there was a time when women were starting to access more management roles, and I benefit from Barbara Tyler, for example, who was also a director at the McMichael, so I've inherited her role, but also her desk. So I started working with her right out of university in Ottawa with the National Museums. So there were women at that period, I think, who were really paving the way for 
uh, us and mentoring the younger women coming out of university at the time. So what inspires you the most about what you do? Ah, <laughs> um, I've always loved museums because I love the access they give you to the treasures of the world. And I find that that is such an important thing that we get to be able to place ourselves by seeing ourselves in the context of this long reach of human history. Uh, with the Art Museum, I think also it's that direct connection with the most creative parts of our, our, our beings as human beings. There are some people who, who believe that uh, museums may be dying. Uh, people are maybe less interested to go see artifacts than maybe they had been in the past, probably because we have access to so much now with uh, the internet and through mm -hmm. you know, multimedia. Um, do you think that that might be the case? or? Well, it's very interesting. We've been talking about this, actually, um, some of my colleagues. Um, I know. I think it is the notion of experience. I think what people are looking for is experience. We do have access to knowledge. And in the past, museums often saw themselves as schools, as encyclopedias, three-dimensional encyclopedias. We don't need to do that anymore. So what we're offering is experience. And I think experience of beautiful spaces, experience of the real thing, and I think that's a really important thing, you cannot appreciate a painting if you only see it as a thumbnail sketch. So for you, um, what kind of advice would you have for, say, a young woman uh, who might come to you and say, I want a job in this field. I want to I wanna, you know, be a leader and I want to one day be a director of a museum or an art gallery. What kind of advice would you have for her? Well, uh, work hard. Um, you have to have the right credentials as well, and I think that's really important. Education obviously counts, but there's lots of different pathways to work in the museum. We have directors who come out of an art history background. We have directors who come out of a business background. We have directors who come out, as I have, out of a history background. I think it is you have to have the correct education. It does help to have good mentors. I found that I had some great ones, um, almost all of them women. And um, I also was persistent when I started out. I was persistent in getting a job and I was persistent in volunteering. So the combination of persistence, of being willing to volunteer and then to uh, really um, work hard to get that first job and then from there to really uh, continue your education, continue to learn and grow within the field. And I think um, for me, I love to see the enthusiasm of younger women and to see uh, the, the excitement they bring. And I think showing excitement in a job, showing that you're ready to learn, that you're ready to do and undertake uh, projects really makes a difference. Well, Victoria, I have really enjoyed this time with you, getting to know more about you and the McMichael. Thank you for being here, uh, and I wish you all the best. Well, thank you, Shannon, and thank you for making me part of Extraordinary Women. For more information about Extraordinary Women TV, my guests, and to watch past episodes, I encourage you to visit ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. And I'd love to stay in touch with you. Join me on Twitter for an empowering stream of Extraordinary Women TV updates. On Facebook, we can connect at Extraordinary Women TV. Well, thank you for joining me today. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I look forward to seeing you soon.